Why did GM think that was a good idea when it was made? Silliness. I recommend this aftermarket case saver. This is not a sponsored video. Drop it on. Installed. Okay, so here's the front half of the transfer case. And right here is the magnet and then the pump filter, so the filter screen. So I'm gonna take the magnet out, inspect what's on it, and then remove the filter screen and clean it and then reinstall it all carefully. But I can tell there's not a lot of debris on this magnet for 120,000. In fact, the center part of the magnet is pretty well bare, but there's just some metal mud on the exterior and no chips or chunks. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks and we'll give it a wipe down and then reinstall it. Now, when it comes to this filter screen, there's actually nothing in it. I can see from here, it's completely clean, but that looks so good, I'm gonna leave it alone. But if I did wanna take it out, I'd carefully pull it out of the pump. There's an O-ring in there you wanna be careful of. And then we would clean the screen and then reuse it. Okay, so here's the magnet all wiped off. Give it a hit with a little brake cleaner. Probably not relevant, but anyway. There it is, super clean, and we just bloop, drop it in there. And here's the debris that came off it. So even though there wasn't that much on it, it still kind of goes a long way on a clean rag. So just thought you'd be interested in that. But that's all normal, 120,000 kilometers. You would expect some metal mud on there, but uh, ideally no chunks and there were no pieces of anything. Now let's talk about the Briny case saver. So B-R-N-Y, I don't know if that's how you say it, but I've heard it referred to on the web as a Briny case saver. It's a really, like you know teeny tiny shim kind of a thing but it's one of these so simple and it just works that's kind of the beauty of it so what it does is there's your pump and when you get the the rear case half off you just take it and drop it on installed so it's as simple as that now there is an orientation because these pump uh, tabs are not equally spaced all the way around so you know you got to make sure that this is in the right orientation Okay, so here we are looking at the rear case half. This is the area where the pump fits in when you assemble it. And you can clearly see where, right there. Now these tabs all need to fit up and touch the case. So I'll move these tabs in place, but you'll notice after I do that with three of the tabs, one of the tabs, the tab that had the original factory crazy silly clip, one of those tabs, has a gap. There's your gap right there. See that gap? Well, that's the amount that this case half had worn due to the pump rubbing on the clip from the factory and the clip rubbing on the case half. The case saver will fit, but I know there's a gap there. And you're gonna just set that aside. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of JB Weld. Just a little bit, you need, you know, less than the size of a pea. I'm gonna fill that gap in and then put this case saver back in place and kind of push the JB Weld so that it's, uh, you know, going to be snug to the case saver. Put a little bit right there. The goal here, don't make a mess. Less is more. So I'm going to take this big flat blade. Okay, so I fiddled with it a little bit and I've got all the clearance taken up. So all that wear is now gone. Here is the rinky dink child's toy clip that is installed right there. And it goes over this little raised stud to keep it in place. And this is the thing that's supposed to isolate that pump right there from this. So basically when it's installed, it looks more or less like that. It covers one of these lobes. And what happens is these clips, they wear, they break. In fact, mine, it's supposed to be retained onto that stud by this part right here. But it, as soon as I took the case apart, this thing was loose and not retained at all. What I saw is that this clip had started to wear through the case. So it wasn't like the sharp pump, but the pump pushed on the, the clip and the clip flat surface right here even wore through the case. Now, why did GM think that was a good idea when it was made? Silliness. The replacement for this, when GM noticed that this was a problem, they came up with a new clip design that is a better design from the, like, it doesn't, it's not as prone to fracturing as this clip does, but it doesn't do anything to save the case. Like it doesn't do anything better than this. 
and this is what's gonna replace it. Here's a look at that snap ring. And if you're gonna have any problem getting it apart, it's usually this thing right here. So this snap ring, it will swivel back and forth like that. And there's a little window in the case for you to get your snap ring pliers in here, okay? So what you have to do, this snap ring is, when it's installed properly, it locks in this little ridge right here in the bearing. And because this bearing is locked with a snap ring, you can't get the case halves apart easily. So what you have to do is open up that snap ring. You have to open up that snap ring while you're prying the case apart. Now, when I say pry, I mean like pry with a plastic screwdriver or like uh, your fingernails. You're not trying to put a three foot pry bar and move these cases apart. Because if you do, you'll either damage, you'll damage something. Now, my case had 40 thousandths of shaft end play. So the shaft, this shaft would move back and forth, 40 thousandths. Seemed like a lot. I talked to a, a transmission shop this, in the area, and they tell me that that wear is likely caused from this snap ring rattling around in its track where the snap ring goes. And he said, you can change the case if you want, and it will tighten up that clearance, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't help you. The clearance doesn't hurt that that shaft end play doesn't hurt anything so he said we ignore that end play and don't worry about it okay so now that you have everything wiped down your case saver is installed in the front half of the case you've cleaned the opposing surface from the back half of the case rinsed it all off with brake cleaner and wiped it with a clean rag and dried it and also blown out all of these bolt holes to make sure there isn't any fluid built up in them it's time to put the rtv silicone on now this is an example of where a pro knows what to do here and an amateur's kind of goof it up. And I'm not claiming I'm a pro, but I do know what pro's advice is. And they say, make the tiniest hole at the end of this tube. You're not trying to use this entire tube. You're trying to use like, like three times as much as will fill this little nozzle here. It's very, very small amount. And you know, I've seen people go around the bolt holes it's not necessary. You're only trying to seal the inner perimeter of the case halves. So I'm going to show you here. And again, not claiming I'm the best at this, but I do know less is more because if you put too much on, it's going to squeeze inside the case. It can clog up, come, come loose, clog up your filter, and then your, your oil pump will starve for oil. With the dowel pins in place, you can't really misalign this. So make sure your case saver's in. Don't forget that. Make sure it's on the right lobes. And slide it down over top of all this good stuff. Okay, now it's sitting on the dowels. It's not actually contacting. Okay. And there, it lined up with the dowels. Boop. It's in place. So now you take all your bolts and put them in. Now don't crank them in super tight. Just get them all threaded and then I'll be back at you in a minute. Put them all in by hand several turns. You definitely don't want to cross thread any of these bolts. So here's the tricky part and the camera's not going to be able to show this. You can't just screw this down and tighten it up. You've got to seat that snap ring in that bearing. So it takes, you probably could do it with screwdrivers, but I've got snap ring pliers that grip the inside of a snap ring and open it. That's what you need. Had to lay, it, lay the unit down on its side. And that way, the, the way, I wasn't trying to lift the weight of all these gears upright so that the snap ring would engage. I actually used my snap ring pliers to spread the snap ring apart and then I stuck a screwdriver into that groove in the bearing and pried like this, gently pried, to cause this bearing to move that way. And then the snap ring fell into place. So I'm hoping the camera can show you, but you want that snap ring to be in that bearing groove. And watch, when I push down on it, it should just spin like that. If it doesn't spin nicely like that, it may be in the groove near the front, but not in the back, and you've got to fix that. 
So that's how that is. Now let's go back to uh, installing those bolts. You only have a limited time for that RTV to dry, but it's a cold garage here, so. Not too much of a rush here today, I don't think. And if you're sure none of these boys are cross-threaded. None of those felt great going in. Okay, so I've got my 3 8 torque wrench set to 20 foot-pounds. And we'll do a we'll do a torque on a crisscross pattern here. Twenty. This is probably not the correct pattern, but you do want to start in the middle and work your way out to the edges. I'll come back and tighten all these up. I'll reinstall the rubber plug here and the two speed sensors. If you have a really worn transmission. Sometimes the speed sensors do collect metal, metal particles. I do recommend replacing the O-rings. They're probably a 50 cent part. And if I had them, I'd, exa I'd do exactly that. I'd put new ones in, but they weren't leaking before and they're probably not gonna leak now. Now, with respect to these sensors, they take a 19 mil socket, okay? Now you do not need to use a four foot strong bar on these. I've been told that when these cases came out, the specifications for torquing these sensors was incorrect. You now need to torque them to 11 foot-pounds, no more. If you torque them to any more than 11 foot-pounds, you can break the sensor, and that's just going to be no good. So be very careful. Use your tiny torque wrench, set it to 11 foot-pounds, and torque them in. And that's it. You're done with that. That's it. There you have it.